there! Have you ever came across gigabyte and megabyte or even kilobyte and got confused? Well, my name is Lynn and in today's video we will be learning about units of measuring digital information like bit, byte and megabyte. And if you want to learn about data rates like megabyte per second, then stay tuned for our next video. Anyways, what are we waiting for? Let's get right into today's lesson. Digital information, which is stored in storages like hard drives and USB memories, are measured with units starting from bits, bytes, kilobyte, and so on. You might observe these measurement units on your computer while saving your homework as a Word document. A bit is a binary digit, the smallest increment of data on a computer. It is usually 0 or 1. One byte consists of 8 bits. A character like letter or numeric such as A, B, or 8 is stored as one byte. For example, letter A is stored on your PC as one byte that contains the bits 011401. So everything stored in our computer storages like pictures, videos, or music are encoded as bits. Remember, one bit is 0 or 1 and one byte is 8 bits. Now, let me give you an interesting example. Lynn, my name. Storing it in a text file will occupy 3 bytes like so. Each letter contains 8 bits. L, I, N. Really interesting, right? Data can be measured using different measuring units. Examples are 1 kilobit, which is 1024 bit, 1 megabit, which is 1024 kilobit, 1 gigabit, which is 1024 megabit, 1 terabit, which is 1024 gigabit, 1 zettabit, which is 1024 terabit, and yeah, remember 1 byte is 8 bits. Now you can convert from bit to byte in a really simple step, which is by dividing 1 over 8. So let me give you a few examples. 1 kilobit divided by 1 over 8 kilobyte will give you, you 0.125 kilobytes. All you have to do is divide by 1 over 8. Now 1 megabit can also be converted by dividing 1 over 8, which will give us 0.125 megabytes. Really simple. It's actually really fun to solve too. But why do we have all of these measuring units? Suppose we have a folder which is 0.5 gigabytes. This number might seem simple, but if it was in bits or bytes, the number would have been way more complex and more confusing. So let me explain some more. 0.5 gigabytes can be made bigger, as in a bigger digit number, by dividing by multiplying by 1024 megabytes, which will give us 512. And again, this number might can also be converted into an even bigger digit by multiplying by 1024 kilobytes. Which will give us 524,000 kilobytes, which can also again be converted into an even bigger digit by multiplying by 1024, which will give us the answer in bytes. So 536 million bytes also be converted again to bits, lastly to bits. So you get the answer 536 million bytes multiplied by 8 will give us 4 trillion bits. Oh my god, that's really big. I'm really thankful that we have all of these other measurements which keep things simple. Anyways, now we have a folder which is 10 trillion bits big. This number is really complex and confusing. Let's see how can we make it smaller using the other measurements. 10 trillion bits should be divided by 8 first so that you can get it, the answer in bytes. 
which is 1 trillion. Now, we have to convert this to kilobyte. And in order to do that, you have to divide 1 trillion bytes by 1024, which will give us 1 billion kilobytes. Let's convert this into megabyte and then gigabyte. So 1 million kilobytes divided again by 1024 will give us 119,000 megabytes. And lastly, let's divide that one more time by 1024, which will finally give us 1.16 gigabytes. Really cool. Now, abbreviations. Capital MB is abbreviation for megabyte. Small MB is abbreviation for megabit. Capital KB is abbreviation for kilobyte. Small KB is abbreviation for kilobit and so on so whenever you see capital b that means it's byte and whenever you see small b that means it's bit all right guys i hope you enjoyed this video and was able to understand the lesson make sure to stay tuned for our part two of this video where we'll be talking about data rate which are used to measure speed of traffic like networks using megabytes per second and more if you guys have any question, make sure to comment it in the comment section and I will be happy to answer you. And make sure to subscribe to join our family and give this video a big thumbs up to if you understood the lesson. And keep programming and I'll see you guys next time on Programming Kids. Bye for now.